Hello everyone, this is Brad with BradGump.com. Um, today I'm going to do a video walkthrough of how to remove a window sash from a window. And then uh, what I'm going to do is in another video I'm going to show you how to, how to remove the glazing, a couple different methods, and reglaze the windows. Um, I'm mainly doing this just to show that, you know, I'm just not not only a computer guy, but I can do handyman stuff like reglazing windows and and uh, stuff of that nature. So this is the window that I'm going to approach. I would film the entire thing, however, that could be a very long video. Um, it generally, takes about 15 to 30 minutes to remove the whole window. That's that's bottom sash and top sash, um, and that's what I consider one whole vid one whole window. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pause the video right now and here shortly, for you at least, um, you'll see what it looks like with the whole process. So bear with me here. First step is I had to remove the blind. Now you may be wondering why I had to remove the blind. I'm going to step into the frame here. The blind generally goes here and here. These are parting boards here, and pretty much what this does, what this board does, is it keeps this bottom sash in, in line. This is called a track. Uh, this is where the, where the window travels. Now, as you can see, this window opens pretty nicely, but it, it's not a matter of how nice it opens. The glazing, which generally faces the outside, um, over time will become brittle and start breaking off of the window sash. Um, and that's what I'm doing here today. There's maybe 30 windows in this unit, and they all need need some serious work. So what I'm going to do here now, now that the blind is off, is I'm going to remove these two pieces of wood right here. And typically that doesn't come loose like that. Normally I have to ram a uh, pry bar or putty putty knife in there and pry it off, and then. Uh, and then I have access to the bottom sash. The bottom sash by far is the easiest to remove. You pull these two pieces out, and voila, you can pull this off and pull off the sash cords, and uh, take off the hardware if you want to. I'll do that at a later time, I won't bore you with that. And then the uh, bottom sash just completely comes out. So, and then what I'll do eventually is I'll pull out these parting stops here, and those are the tricky ones because you don't want to break them because they're like half inch by seven eighths of an inch deep and half inch wide and they're kind of hard to run through the table saw. So I generally try to keep these in the best condition as possible without damaging or breaking them. If I break them, I'm uh, out of luck at that point. I have to go make some. So that's the first step. Next step will be removing the top sash. All right, here we are. Remove one side, and I've got the other side pretty much there. So pretty much what you do is remove those. And how I did that is I took this large five and one, I wedged it in there, and I smacked it in with a hammer. Um, sometimes you can run that sharp edge down along the seam. It'll come loose. Um, but that's what I did for this window. Is I, I pushed this in here and I hammered away on this and then this popped loose. The other side wasn't so easy. Someone decided to use some heavy grade nails and it was slightly harder to get off. So now what I do next is I take these end nippers by these Menards or Lowe's and I grab hold of these nails and I pull them through from the back side. Some people will help hammer them through, but you know I, I learned from my father to pull them through the back. Voila! Some of them are hard, some of them are pretty easy. Pretty much what you do next: small water bar. You might need that at some point. Those Menards. Bought this one at Menards. Um, what you do next? Pull out this window sash. 
Sometimes it can be easy, sometimes not so much. Um, years of painted on less can make, make a bit of hassle. Let's work out with that. Maybe. <laughs> Hatch there, and this is what I'm repairing. Let me put my end nippers away. This is what I'm repairing right here. This is this glazing line, and as you can see, some of it's coming off. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm using a steam method instead of general wear and tear. So, um, so that's what I'm replacing. This one doesn't look too too bad, but at the bottom it does. So. That's it for this one. I'm going to pause the video and work on top sash. Bear with me here. What I'm doing right now is I'm removing this piece right here. This piece is the parting stop. So it separates the bottom sash from the top sash. Um, and it's the piece that I want to keep. I don't want to break it by any means. Um, but sometimes they do break and it just means a really long and bad day for me because I have to reproduce them. Um, so what I'm doing now is I've got my little wonder bar here or a little crowbar um, wedged in between the parting stop and the actual uh, window framing. Up here I've got my big wonder bar wedged between the top sash and the parting stop and on these historic windows this piece right here this is the the meeting rail on the bottom sash it's curved in like this and on the top sash it's curved in like, it's curved out like this so that when you apply the window lock that's usually by um, compression these two meet up and create you know a, a pretty solid barrier so that no no air movement can come in um, so to get this part stop around get this part stop around this uh, meeting rail is sometimes tricky. Sometimes someone before me has come through and cut it right here, cut the parting stop, has cut it, and that makes it a real easy job for me because all I have to do is pull out the bottom and the top and I'm good to go. Now how did I loosen this up? I took this 5-in-1, or 8-in-1 as Lowe's call it, um, and pressed it up against here and then I hammered it in with my hammer like this, There's nothing to it, and then uh, I made it all loose so that you can start prying it. So what I'm going to do, with any luck, I can capture it on video for you, on up this party stop. A lot of times you got to wiggle it, play with it. No method is 100%, you just got to do what you got to do for every window. Oh, oh. oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I just wiggle it until it comes loose. Pull it out. Now that's her. She's been in there for years. It's this black right there with dirt. Pretty much what I'll do is I'll take my scrapers and blow torch or whatever method I choose to use and I'll strip all this paint off of here take it down to bare wood like the back of that piece is so that I can then prime it and repaint it 
So that's it for that side. And as you can see, this becomes real loose at, at this point. So what I'll do is I'll remove the other side, and then the top sash will come out. Top sash also has sash cords and pulleys, and inside this cavity here are weights that hold the window in place or hold it up in the in the summer so that you can get fresh air. So, alrighty, and I hop up here and pause the camera. At some point in time, someone worked on this window. They, uh, they split it down here, and uh, rather than replacing it, they uh, spliced it together and drove nails into it to hold it in place. Um, again, with these, pretty much what you do is you take your end nippers and you pry those out, and you can still strip them and you can still clean them up. It just depends on the state of the sag or the parting stop. Um, since this is my father's unit, I know what he'll say is he'll want um, a new parting stop made for this one because this one's pretty beat up along this edge here. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I hate making them, but it's part of the job. Um, so here we are with the with the uh, the top sash. Seeing if I have my tools on me. I'm wearing an apron not only for the pockets, but when you get into the reglazing aspect of it, you're you're doing a lot of pulling towards you, and this just helps keeps keeps the dirt off of it. It's actually made by a biking company um, for working on bicycles. I just bought it because it's made out of canvas, like a lot of tarps. Um, but yeah, it serves a purpose. Lots of pockets. So here's top sash after pulling out the bottom or the, the parting stops. And as you can see, hopefully you can see in the video, these uh, sash cords are in worse state than the bottom sashes, and that's probably because they've been in a cavity here in the wall and air has moved to and from. Um, and it's kind of rotted them away or just dirtied them up. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my end nippers here. And I'm going to cut them. As you can hear, the, the weight shot back through and it's now laying in the cavity. And that's not a real big issue because what I'll do at a later date and maybe a later video is there's openings right here in the window sash. You can't see them in the frame, but there's an opening in this sash here with a typically a straight head screw. And you pull that screw out and pull the board out and then you can have access to the weights. And that's how, and that's what you do when you run a new sash cord. Um, is you just open up that cavity down below. And this sash cord here, you just run it through after you tie it to the, to the weight. And you get it to the right length to where it'll hold the window up or hold the window down. So, yeah, that's it for this one. Um, I'll take a picture of this when I'm done. I am going to scrape this clean. I'm going to scrape this clean here along this window. Because um, I believe next summer this house is scheduled for a new paint job. So, um, thank you for watching. Hopefully, I can do this in one part. If I can't, it'll be two parts. So, thank you much.